So by now you would have developed an understanding of what the public sector and the private sector are and who owns businesses within those particular sectors. The private sector is, remember that one, which has people, individuals, or groups of individuals, or normal citizens of a country owning that business would be considered part of the private sector. Public sector, on the other hand, would be all those businesses which are run and governed by the state or the government of that country. Okay, now moving forward in this chapter, or rather in this video, we're going to be focusing only on the private sector businesses. Okay, remember individuals, citizens, those businesses, the private sector businesses. And once people like you and I, everyday people, part of the citizens paying taxes, uh, surely not getting <laughs> the return for our taxes, but we're still part of this country. And if we decide to set off on our own ventures, open a new restaurant, shop, whatever, we will be involved in the private sector. And once we decide to go ahead with it, we have to formalize a legal structure. Okay, what that means is that you are going to have to be known by a certain category, you will have to be registered with the government in certain scenarios. So there will be certain requirements to become one type of business over the other within the private sector. But largely, the biggest differentiating factor between these businesses is the amount of finance each is able to generate. Okay, now, of course, when we dive individually into these uh, individual businesses, we'll talk about it in more detail, but understand that most businesses would start off as being a sole trader. Okay, it's the easiest way to set up a business. You don't have to put much money down. And if you have an idea, surely you can follow as a sole trader. So meaning one, so one trader, one person, one owner. And if you need more finance, if you want to grow as a business, you're going to have to look to expand and maybe become a partnership. If you want even more finance, you're going to have to become a limited company because they have a higher chance or a be better ability to generate finance. Okay. Cooperatives are slightly different, so I've kept them in the end, but they're still in the private sector. When we get to that, we'll discuss it in more detail. So within this video, I'm gonna be talking about sole trader and partnership, particularly limited company is going to follow and just a note here that whenever you look at limited company, you're looking, there will be two types called private limited company and public limited company. All right, private and public limited company, that video will describe exactly how one is different from the other one. But in this one, we will discuss what a sole trader does and a partnership does. Starting with the concept of limited liability. Now the word liability simply by itself means owing someone. Things that you owe. And limited of course mean restricted. So whatever you owe in this scenario is restricted to the amount that you owe. Okay, that's what limited liability means. But in the grand scheme in terms of business, what it simply means that when you've invested in a business, you are an owner, you are a shareholder, only the amount that you've invested in the business will be at risk of being taken away. Your personal assets, your home, your car, your jewelry, or any other thing that you may have that you categorize as your personal assets, which were no part of your investment in the business, they will remain yours even if the business fails. No one can take those away from you to sell to make up the money for the losses that will have to be covered. That process or that concept known as limited liability where in the event of a potential loss only the amount invested in the company is at risk of being lost not the owner's personal assets okay so let's say he's an owner he has his own home has a piano has a pretty nice looking drum kit and is at his own money and of course some of this money will be of a personal nature saved and kept aside some of it will be invested in the business and in the case of limited liability only the amount that you've invested is at risk of being taken away okay the rest of it house piano and the rest of it remains with the owner 
that is limited liability now i'm sure at this point you guys are thinking oh that's a pretty nice thing we should start a business none of our own money is going to be lost and it's just a little investment well not all businesses have limited liability as an option the ones that we discussed earlier on the four sole trader partnership limited companies and cooperatives sole trader and partnership are two types of businesses which have the exact opposite of limited liability that is unlimited liability okay of course since again liability means things that you owe unlimited means that's not limited to the amount of investment you made in the business okay so what it means is if the business fails all the personal assets and the assets that are invested in the business are at risk of being taken away so when you invest this is also at risk this is also at risk this is also okay of course it doesn't mean person goes to the business and plays the piano plays a killer drum solo and gets the job done it just simply means that he owns one of these things and because these all of these are linked to the owner therefore all of these are linked to the business and if the business fails and the business has losses which they cannot cover with the invested amount in the business whoever the people are who are coming for their money the banks the debtors mm, the goons whoever they may be they're not going to stop at the money invested in the business they're going to take it out of your personal pockets as well that is unlimited liability finally that's one of the main features of a sole trader that if you decide to be begin your business as a sole trader also known as a sole proprietor the first challenge that you're going to face is going to be of unlimited liability where you can be sued for your personal assets as well now what defines a sole trader or a sole proprietor is that there is only one owner in the end the buck stops at one person he is the person who's invested all the money who's putting in the effort who's opening the store closing them at night keeping all the records making the sales buying all the raw materials uh, hiring workers training them even so this is a person who's fully responsible for all aspects within a business another problem that sole traders face is their inability to raise finance when i say inability yes they have their own money but in order to raise more finance it technically means they have to move away from their business shut it down for a day and go running after banks and people who may lend them money so if he does that then that technically means you're not making any sales so it's hard to take the money out or oh, sorry rather the time out to go and look for the money and on top of that when you're a sole trader single guy going to a bank asking for money they'll be like who are you show us a business plan show us your past data do you have any track record for success do you have any special ability so there you're going to have to use a lot of tools to convince anyone to lend you money being a sole trader and of course there's only so much you can raise from your own pocket or stealing from your mom's purse right so it has to be it will be very difficult to raise large amounts for sole traders however it's the most convenient and the easiest way to start a business mm, you're driving down the road you see on the side there's vendors of all sorts people selling things at the at the traffic lights they're single owners minding their own business and i mean not disturbing you not that type of minding their own business but running their own business so easiest thing to do and most people will start off at this point and of course when you do so when you do become a a, a sole proprietor there are certain benefits that come with it okay and firstly most importantly why a lot of people their biggest motivation for remaining a sole trader is that they have all the control you're the single owner you don't have to listen to anyone you don't have to justify your decisions to anyone it's purely your own objectives your abilities your vision that you can execute being the sole owner of the business on top of that you keep all the profits yeah that's a nice thing you know, i'm making i'm putting all the effort i'm making all this money i'd like to spend or at least keep it all for myself so the profits are all yours one more thing and this is this is really the uh, the a very good unique point for a sole trader is that because sole traders are 
uh, involved directly in the business process. They, like I said, open the door, do the cash register, shelf the, uh, uh, stock it with um, all the products. So they're minding the whole business themselves. And when customers come in, they have a direct line with the owner, which means you can develop close ties with them. And close ties mean you will probably end up having more cust loyal customers who, who like the personal touch of the owner. On top of that, you decide your own working hours, your own working conditions. If you don't, wake, if you don't want to wake up early, okay, open it at 10. It's your business. You decide what to do. And finally, when, when you do decide to go on your own, become a sole trader, you'd want to base it on things that you like based on your interest. You have that autonomy. You have the choice to do it as a sole trader. As opposed to with any other structure, you will have to listen to what other people want to do as well. Okay? Now, of course, what has some advantages would also have certain disadvantages. And one that we've already discussed is that they have what we call unlimited liability. So personal assets could be lost if the business fails. On top of that, since it's the easiest and the most convenient way to start a business, anybody can do it. So it's going to be a highly competitive type of business. I mean, if like you see, when you go on the street, somebody selling vegetables on a you know on a stall, you'll see three or four more right beside him, and they're all fighting for the same purse, which is your purse, right? So there'll be a lot of competition. You will have to do all the things yourselves, which means the hours are going to be very long. You open the place, you close it, you do all the things, so it's your responsibility. On top of that, if you die, God forbid, I wish you a healthy, long life. But if a sole trader dies, there is no continuity. Okay? There is no transfer of ownership. There was one guy who owned it, now it's done, the business ends, someone else will take over, but then that person will be the owner and it will start from scratch in terms of the ownership of the business. And of course, taking full responsibility means you have to be answerable for all actions. If something goes south, if something goes bad, the customer has a complaint, who's going to be held responsible? It's the one owner, right? So that's what a sole trader is, and it's, of course, a stepping stone for other things that this businessman or this entrepreneur would want to do. And of course, one of the more understandable objectives is to grow as a business. And when you want to grow, the biggest obstacle that comes in the way is your lack of finance, your lack of capital. And capital, of course, one person can raise only so much. With two, you can raise twice as much. With four, four times as much. So I'm sure you're starting to establish a pattern here on that the more the merrier. And when you bring in more owners into a sole trader bit, uh, business, it transforms from being a sole trader to a partnership. But I mean, you know what they say, right? It takes two to tango. Well, let's get ready to dance because that's what a partnership is, where you understand that, look, being alone, being one owner, you will be limited by the time that you have, the effort that you can put in, the amount of money that you have. And in order to grow, you have to bring in more people. And that's where you start becoming a partnership. And now, obviously, partnership is many people combining for one single purpose, one business, that's a partnership. Now in a partnership, there could be two people, there could be 20, in some countries it could vary, there could be 50, so it varies, but generally a group of people doing, uh, who own the business collectively would be involved in a partnership. Now remember again that partnership also has the problem of unlimited liability where if you lose the business your personal assets may also be lost to cover for the business's losses okay unlimited liability and as soon as <coughs> a partnership is made a partnership agreement would be drafted and in that agreement you will have all the names of the partners you will have the roles what everyone is supposed to do the amount of investment they've made and in return what is going to be their profit sharing how uh, the different uh, the departments will be communicating. So all the ins and outs of the business will be put down on a partnership agreement and every partner would sign on it. If a partner dies, if a partner leaves, or so for any reason, you know, they have to leave, you have to reduce the number of partners. The original partnership agreement is dissolved, it's nullified, it's void, and a new partnership agreement is made with the remaining number of partners. 
Now, of course, the moment you decide to give up being a sole trader and become a partnership, you're looking for certain benefits to come out of that arrangement. And first and foremost and understandable is that you start getting more people and the more people you get, you also try to get people with different expertise, different backgrounds, different experiences. So uh, let's say you've been working as a sole trader and you know you're lacking on the sales side of things. So the next partner you bring in, the smart thing would be to do is to obviously look for someone who has a bit of experience and expertise in the sales element. So when they become a partner, they can bring their expertise to the business. And of course, that benefits everyone. It also allows you to specialize, divide the work. You can do the finance or HR, the partner could do marketing, someone else could do the, uh, like I said, the finance side thing. So you can divide up the work and of course, that's a lot easier for each partner rather than everyone working on everything. So you get to specialize in a partnership. Also, you don't have to worry about problems alone. You don't have to come with solutions alone. There is shared decision making. Everyone can chime in with their opinions, with their feedback. And of course, with more heads, you will always have a better solution, a more innovative product. And partnership brings that. Additionally, as you bring in more people, of course, it's not going to be for free. What you're gonna ask for is additional capital. Put some money down, come in as partner, then you can share the profits with us. So another way to get more capital is simply changing your legal structure from a sole trader to a partnership. And finally, which is also a nice thing, the losses are also shared. You know, you will remember in sole trader, the losses and the profits both belong to the owner. Here, yes, the profits will be shared, that's a bad thing, but at the same time, the losses are also going to be shared, which means that it's a little easier on each partner. You don't have to cover all the losses on your own pocket. Everyone else can chip in when something bad comes up. So, losses are shared. The disadvantages, of course, limited liability we already discussed. Profits are shared. As a sole trader, it was your show, it was your game, You put in all the money, but you also kept all the profits. At the partnership, you share it with all the partners according to the proportions given in the partnership agreement. Also, similar to a uh, sole trader, partnership suffers from the problem of no continuity. So if a partner dies, if a partner leaves, then the original document, the original uh, partnership agreement is canceled and the new one's made with the new owners and finally and is you would you would also feel felt this when you're working on group projects and things like that is that if you're not in the majority and if the majority makes a decision then you're just bound by it so let's say there are five partners uh, three of them agree on one point the other two will have to follow because the three of them together are in the majority so in partnership you're often bound by partners decisions right or wrong sometimes they favor you sometimes they go against you so whichever way you look at it, you're going to have to follow what the majority wants to do. So uh, another little uh, lesson to take away from this is that from when you go from being a sole trader to a partnership, the larger you get, the original owner's control starts to diminish, starts to come down. As you can see already from being uh, sold to a partnership, you're sharing all the profits, you're sharing all the decision making. So your original control will be lost as a partnership. But remember, if you have to grow, there's only so much you can raise on your own. There's only so much you can do on your own. You will have to bring in partners and move to a partnership.